Hey there, class. It's good to be with you once again. Um, we are in social studies class, and this week we are going to be reviewing. So we're going to be reviewing the Constitution, state capitals, the Bill of Rights. Um, and I would like to show a video. And so just sit back, relax, and enjoy this video about the U.S. Constitution. Um, Mr. Grivers told me my mother was here with a note. That's not my mother. Dear Tim and Moby, what is the U.S. Constitution? Is it a law? From Jake. A constitution is a basic set of rules for government. It lays out how the government of a particular country works. So the U.S. Constitution does that for the United States. When our nation was founded, most countries were ruled by kings and queens. They had nearly absolute authority to make decisions for everyone and do whatever they wanted. But our founders wanted a system based on the rule of law. Everyone in the country, no matter who they are, has to follow the law. And the U.S. Constitution law. is the supreme law of the land. That means all other laws have to stay within the limits it sets out. Any law that conflicts with it is illegal and declared unconstitutional. Well, the people who wrote the Constitution, called the Framers, divided it into several sections. First, there's the preamble, or introduction, which sets out the goals of the document. Then come the seven main sections, called Articles. Each article covers one part of government or a key government process, like how a new state can join the country, or the rules for appointing a judge. Finally, we have additions to the original document called amendments. The framers knew the country would grow and evolve in ways they couldn't predict. So the Constitution includes rules to amend or change the Constitution itself. But passing an amendment is way more difficult than passing a law. Since the Constitution's creation more than 200 years ago, it's only been amended 27 times. Our Constitution is based on a few core principles. One is self-government, also called popular sovereignty. The preamble starts with the words, we the people, in huge letters. The idea is that the American people are creating a government through the Constitution. The power to rule belongs to us. But it wouldn't be practical if we had to weigh in on every decision the country needs to make. So we elect leaders to represent us in Washington. They make choices on our behalf by passing laws, appointing judges, running agencies, all that stuff. This kind of government is called a republic. We, the people, lend our power to representatives. If we don't like how they use it, we elect someone else the next time around. If our representatives try to abuse their power, that's against the law. They can only do what the Constitution allows them to. If a power isn't specifically written there, they don't have it. This principle of limited government prevents our leaders from grabbing too much power. It's like the flip side of popular sovereignty. We, the people, start off with all the power. And the government starts off with no power beyond what we give it. State governments are another big limitation. The Constitution strikes a balance between national and state power. The system is called federalism. Delegated powers are those granted to the federal government. Like, it has the power to print money and declare war. While the states get reserved powers, like the power to establish schools and make new marriage laws. Some powers are shared by the nation and the states, like collecting taxes. These are called concurrent powers. Of course, both state and federal governments are limited by the Constitution. Besides having to share power with the states, the federal government itself is divided. The separation of powers splits control of the government into three branches. That ensures that no single branch will gain too much power. The legislative branch, which consists of both chambers of Congress, makes the laws. The executive branch, which includes the president, enforces the laws. And the judicial branch, which is the whole federal court system, reviews the laws. This division also creates a system of checks and balances. 
That means that each branch checks or limits the other branch's power. Like when Congress passes a law, the president can veto or reject it. But with enough votes, Congress can override the veto and pass it anyway. After a law passes, the federal courts can rule that it violates the Constitution. The highest court, called the Supreme Court, makes the final decision about constitutionality. Individual rights are another big check on the government's power. The Bill of Rights, the first 10 amendments to the Constitution, list some of those liberties. They include freedom of speech, the right to a jury trial, freedom of the press, and protection against unfair searches. These amendments were added just after the Constitution itself was approved. Many of the later amendments cover individual rights too. The 13th Amendment outlaws slavery. 14 says that state governments have to respect the same individual rights as the federal government. 15 and 19 gave African Americans and then women the right to vote. Remember how the people have the power in our democracy? Voting is how we exercise that power. It took a while for Americans to realize that we the people includes all of the people. So we updated the Constitution to reflect that. Well, that's the thing about the U.S. Constitution. It isn't perfect, but it gives us everything we need to make it, well, more perfect. That's what it means when people say that it's a living document. As our values change, the Constitution adapts while still holding to its core principles, which I guess is its own kind of perfection. Hey, I really have to get to my next class, Moby. I mean, Mom. Okay, that was our Constitution video. Um, so here is what I would like for you to do for um, your assignment for today. Um, go to brainpop.com. And then go to social studies, U.S. government, U.S. constitution, go to games, and then choose sortify, choose sortify U.S. constitution, and this is the game I would like you to play for your assignment. See how high of a score you can get on several tries. All right, it was good to see you, and we will see you next time. Bye.